and I can talk about failure because failure is an option in my case. Uh, there's a new open source satellite in orbit right now, and I want to see if I can hear the radio beacons that it transmits. The Portland State Aerospace Society has developed their own satellites uh, made right here in Portland, Oregon on the west coast of the United States. And just last week, they got it launched on a SpaceX transporter mission. So it's in orbit right now. It's in a uh, kind of a polar orbit, so it flies from north to south or south to north, depending. I'm at Frenchman's Bar on the Washington side of the Columbia River. And it seems like a good open space that I can use to, uh, to try and listen to the satellite. First, let me describe my setup here a bit. This is a Yagi antenna that's designed for two different frequency bands, depending upon which of these purple elements you attach. Right now, I've got the elements for the 440 megahertz band, and the satellite transmits at 436.5. So that's close enough. This should do quite a good job of receiving the satellite. Um, but as with everything satellite-based, uh, power is an issue. And so this satellite doesn't have a lot of transmit power. It puts out, I think, one watt, which from a thousand kilometers away is not a lot of power to try and receive on the ground. So I have a, a low noise amplifier here that is amplifying the signal immediately out of the antenna, giving it a boost before it goes into my radio. And this radio is based on the HackRF1 software defined radio with a porta pack add on that gives it a screen and controls and all sorts of other good stuff. So instead of having to hook up a full blown PC and have to juggle all that stuff along with the antenna, I can just use this to capture the signal from the satellite. I'm powering the low noise amplifier from the bias voltage of the HackRF. Uh, it's an option you can enable in the firmware. And now I don't have to have a separate battery powering this LNA, which is kind of cool. I'm using a program called gpredict here on my laptop, which shows orbits for all the different satellites um, in the sky that are public at least. I see the satellite is on the horizon to the north and a bit to the east. I'm gonna point the antenna this general direction. I'm a little disoriented about which direction's north. I should probably look on a map. One of the challenges in doing this is that the satellite only transmits a very short burst every 30 seconds. So I only get uh, about one feedback point every 30 seconds to figure out whether I'm pointing in the right direction or not. And in that time, the satellite will have moved significantly. So um, yeah, it's very much just hit or miss. So it's about 30 degrees above the horizon now. I think that's about 30 degrees. It's still uh, significantly east, so maybe like that. I'm getting a bit more background noise than I would expect to get right now. Um, it makes me wonder if I'm pointing at some sort of a cell tower or something that's causing interference. Um, but we'll see when we're done whether we get any viable bursts from the satellite that we can actually decode. I think, I think we may be out of luck for this pass. First of all, I forgot to start recording uh, the, um, the bass band on the radio. And secondly, it just seems a lot noisier out here than I would have expected. And I haven't seen anything that was clearly a burst from the satellite. Usually you'll see a little fuzzy blob on the waterfall. So this particular pass of the satellite, it didn't work out very well for me. It seems like this site may have more noise than I expected, I feel like I'm pretty far from civilization, but who knows, there may be some cell towers hiding around here or something else that's generating a, a powerful signal on a different frequency, but is still getting into my low noise amplifier and basically blowing out the signal I'm interested in. So that last satellite pass was a bit of a bust. There was some sort of increased noise floor that I couldn't really explain. And I, I, I am suspecting that it's the low noise amplifier being saturated due to some sort of local interference, some powerful signal of some sort nearby. So I got up my uh, uh, Yagi antenna again and I hooked it directly up to the HackRF, took out the LNA from the signal path 
and uh, used a firmware mode called Looking Glass to sweep the frequencies from about 100 megahertz to a gigahertz to see what was in the general direction of the satellite at the time that might have been causing that interference. And I found a few things. So first of all, um, we see in Looking Glass that there's a range of frequencies from 500 to 600 megahertz that are showing a lot of energy. Everything else outside that band seems relatively quiet. When I switched over to uh, spectrum analyzer mode, which shows a much smaller chunk of bandwidth, and tuned around between 500 and 600 megahertz, I found several very interesting things. It looks like there are three digital TV stations here, here, and here. Also, some sort of very wideband signal, uh, 18 megahertz wide. That I'm suspecting is maybe a cellular mobile phone LTE signal of some sort. It's been a couple of weeks since I was at Frenchman's Bar trying to receive the ORSAT satellite, and uh, I'm finally getting around to finding out why I failed. I've got a list of digital TV frequency ranges for uh, North America, for United, the United States specifically. And if we scroll down, 518 to 524, sure enough, that is channel 22. 566 to 572 is also a digital television station, and that's channel 30. And lastly, 584 to 590 is channel 33. This other signal, 530 to 548, it later occurred to me 18 megahertz uh, is three times six megahertz, or three times the bandwidth of a single digital television station. And it turns out 530 is also the start of channel 24. So I have a sneaking suspicion that this thing that I thought was a cellular signal is actually three digital television uh, signals uh, stacked right together with no space in between in the spectrum. So it'd be channel 24, and then on the high side of that signal I found, it's 548, and yep, that's the high edge of channel 26 here, right, right there, 548. It looks like all the signals that I found are digital television stations. Channel 22, channel 30, channel 33, and channels 24, 25, and 26. If we zoom into Frenchman's bar here, and we look at where I was standing and where the uh, digital TV signals are being broadcast from, you'll see the problem. You'll see up on these hills are all the digital television antennas. And I think these antennas put out like hundreds of kilowatts worth of power. And they're all line of sight. They're all just blasting straight into my antenna. So what can I do about the interference coming from these digital television stations? There's several things I could try. I could find a location that is further away from the digital television stations, but it's, I'm going to have to go a long ways away to get these signals low enough, I think, that it's not going to interfere significantly. Another approach is to find a site where the terrain blocks the digital television signals uh, significantly and reduces the amount of power from those signals getting into my antenna, thereby making the power from the satellite I'm trying to receive stronger relatively. The third option is to build some sort of a filter that can notch out or remove a significant amount of the power coming from these digital television signals. Then I could still set up at Frenchman's Bar or anywhere else in the Portland area I like and be able to knock the digital television signals down enough that they don't wash out the signals coming from the, the satellite. I'm not sure which one I'm going to try, but um, I'm going to experiment and uh, I'm sure it'll turn into more videos. So uh, subscribe and stick around.